In three, two, one. That's pretty good, right? I like the lights in effect. Kind of the fade in. Whew. It's the closest we can get to a curtain. Well, the closest thing we could get to a curtain would be an actual curtain. Which I guess I could put right in front of the camera here. Just for those of you listening, I am I do do <laughs> sorry, that'll never make me not that'll never not make me laugh. But for those of you uh, listening in and not let me move my chair. Sorry about that. For those of you listening in and not watching on video, I do video recordings of these, which I guess was self-explanatory when I said if you're listening to it and not watching on video, I guess you could assume that I wasn't just making up the fact that I do video recordings of these. <clears throat> anyway, I, had a, I have a light in the studio here with me and I have a remote control and I turn it off and I turn, you know what, I don't even know why I'm explaining this to you, you don't care, you're listening to it, there's no, you don't, you don't care. That's, that's, you know, this is kind of like anybody telling you any sort of news, not the news, but anybody telling you any sort of news or a story like, I went to the doctor today. Great. And what did the doctor say? No, nobody, I don't want to know. <laughs> Whenever somebody starts off a conversation by saying, I went to the doctor today or I got some results back, I, I just clam up. I don't care. Unless it's important. Unless, you know, we're going through this together. Like if you were my wife. And you told, you said, I got the results back. I would like to know what those results are, whether they were positive or negative or inconclusive, whatever they are, that's, you're the one person I probably care. My parents, you know, if something were to happen, uh, you know, in a good, in a good way, if something maybe great was happening to them, I got my blood test results back and any sort of problems that I may have may not have had before are all gone. See, that's the kind of news that I'd be on pins and needles for waiting for. But those, none of those cases apply to anybody who ever tells me, hey, I got my results back or I went to the doctor today. I guess this is very specific about going to the doctor that I have an issue with. But I, I do kind of feel that way about any sort of news, you know, just somebody saying something. Unless it's, I don't know, maybe I have a very narrow band of, you know, like what's interesting if a, if a friend or family member tells me something. Maybe that's why nobody talks to me anymore. That, <laughs> that could be very true. Which, you know, I guess I win then. All right, what are we talking about today? Let's get, uh, let's just dive right into this. So here's one. I went to, I went to a restaurant uh, last weekend. And it, the food was great, everything was great. Nobody's, the test results came back, everything, <laughs> everything is fine. But uh, I made the reservation on open table because I don't want to talk to a human. And then the restaurant called me. And they said, hi, this is the restaurant that you just made a reservation at. We're just calling to confirm your reservation for this Saturday evening at whatever time. Why do they do that? I just made the reservation. I have the ability to update it on open table. Like if, maybe just assume until you hear from me that we're good. Do they have that big of a problem with like other people just not showing up, in which case, okay, th that's a legitimate point. You know, maybe if people are just making reservations all over the place willy-nilly, then the restaurant could maybe flag that user in open table, or at least tell open table, hey, this guy is kind of a schmuck. He welched on his reservation. Just wanted to let you know. Maybe red flag him. But uh, open table does have a nice feature where they don't let you make reservations within, I think, two hours of another reservation. So uh, that makes it... Why call me? Just assume, assume we're good until, unless there's an issue, unless I call you. So I didn't call back and I've never done, this is not a, just this one restaurant, by the way, a lot of restaurants do this and I've never, I've, I've rarely called back. Sometimes just if it's like a really nice restaurant, I, I don't want to lose the reservation out of fear that they might cancel it or something. I will call, but that's, that's happened once every other time. I just don't call and no problems have ever happened. They've never looked at me when I checked in like, oh, you're the guy who didn't call in. Let's give him the table in the back. Actually, I would like the table in the back. Yeah, that's, and I never call back, no, no problems. Actually, and then Open Table also sent me an email. Hey, we're just emailing you to confirm. Are you sure you want this reservation? 
you mean the reservation I just made a few minutes ago? The one where I said, hey, I wanted a reservation at this restaurant for this many people at this time? Yeah, yeah, I'll keep that one. Thanks. But, you know, I... Uh, look, this is this is the state of things now. I have to invent reasons to get angry. <laughs> All things considered, this is not the end of the world. I understand that. But that's what this show is all about. I have to invent things to get mad about. <laughs> I, I don't like also when they try to sell you on window seats. Does, any, does this ever happen? You check in. And the hostess or host is like, well, may we, may we introduce, or may we, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and back that one up (laughs) because I had this whole idea in my head and it didn't work. We're going to try it again. Have you ever checked in and the host or hostess is like, oh, is your whole party here? Yes. Would you like a window seat? Why? So I can get a view of the parking lot. I was just there. I came from there. I can I can see my car out there. What's so nice about this view that you're gonna try to sell me on the window seat? Give me a booth. Give me a booth so I don't have to see any other humans. That's the reason I'm going to a restaurant. I wanna be out, but away. I like the idea of being near people. I like knowing that there might be other people around, but I don't wanna see them. If possible, I don't wanna hear them. Unless there's kind of a juicy, gossipy conversation, you know, at the table next to us. That, that would be kind of fun. And I realize this, this may not make sense to anybody born during COVID, this pandemic, when restaurants are not happening. But in which case, I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. That would be, uh, you'd be my youngest listener. And welcome, actually. Welcome to the show. I don't know how you're understanding any words I'm saying, but I appreciate that you're a supporter. But yeah, the window seat thing always kind of bugs me. I mean, like, you know, if it's a, if we're looking over a city or if we're on top of the space needle where, where every seat is pretty much a window seat, almost every seat. Great. Yeah. Sell me all, sell me all the way. I want the window seat because I can, it's beautiful. The view up there is wonderful. Or the Columbia tower also in Seattle. I realize these references are all from Seattle, but that's where that's, that's my kind of hometown originally. But yeah, the window seat, like, we're, you know what? We're at, a, we're at an Outback Steakhouse. Okay, it's in, it's, I, I don't want to look across the street and see the strip mall. But the, but the window seat's a big deal. What about you guys? How, what, do you prefer the window seat, the booth? Email me at potpodcast at gmail.com. Let me know your thoughts. P-O-A-T podcast, potpodcast at gmail.com. We do, I have been getting some, Listener emails. I appreciate them. Thank you. Keep them coming. Um, Sarah Joe wrote in with an answer to my question about uh, ASAP being, my question was, is it an initialism or an acronym? And Sarah Joe said the term ASAP would be an acronym. Now, I also, somebody else wrote in, a user by the name of Linguafile, saying that ASAP could be both an acronym or and rather an acronym and an initialism because it depends on how you pronounce it. And this, I'm gonna read the email, just one line. It says, an acronym can be pronounced like a word while an initialism is ready or is read as the individual letters. And this user, Linguafile, thinks that ASAP works as both because if you're saying an A-S-A-P, that's an initialism. But if you read it ASAP, more like a word, a dumb word, there would be an acronym. So there we have two differing opinions. If we have anybody who works for a dictionary or maybe an English teacher or something, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know who was right. We're gonna now we're just pitting reader emails against each other. <laughs> who was right, Sarah or Linguafile? All right. Yeah, window seats. Where else are we going with this? I started reading the news again, occasionally, and this isn't gonna be an anti-news thing, but um, I added CNN to my news circle, you know, when I start, I start to read a couple of, I just go for the headlines just to check in, kind of like a little prairie dog, pop my head out, little meerkat. What's going on in the world? What's happening? Oh, it still sucks. Okay. All right. I'll be back next winter. Is that when meerkats come back? I don't know. But the point is I started adding a few different, so now CNN's on there and I, I never paid attention 
to this. This has never been so clear to me before as it is now. I Looking at the headlines of CNN makes me understand why my in-laws watch Fox News 24-7. Not that I'm a huge fan of Fox News, but I started to see different things, like it's totally different headlines on Fox News than I was on CNN. One example, and again, I have no horse in this presidential race, just in case anybody's getting going to get bent out of shape one way or the other. CNN, obviously, is not a huge fan of Trump. A lot of people aren't, but some people are. And uh, CNN had nothing about Biden's little gaffe where he said, uh, I, I think this, this is paraphrasing, but he said the Latin community, unlike the African-American community, is diverse. <laughs> you know, okay. They're all the same. No. And he, I think he's since walked that back. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. But I, I think it was interesting, though, that CNN had nothing about that. Whereas Fox News did. And that was the only thing on Fox News. It was just Biden's terrible. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So that's I, I get. So now I've, I've since removed CNN from the headline circle. I did start to add New York Times, NYTimes.com just to see the headlines. I feel like. That's not so bad. I know, I know in general, they kind of skew to the left. Okay, fine. Yeah, great. But that's why I kind of, and I'm BBC, I'm still poking in, poking my head in there just to see other things. Uh, and I appreciate that. I, that anyway, my, I guess my point is here, I'm trying to intentionally consume news from a variety of different sources that I know have leanings, you know, one way or the other. And hopefully... Maybe I can become a better person. <laughs> that's, that is a far, that's a tall order. When you're this good, can you get any better? And no, I don't think so. I do have an update on my neighbors. So uh, a couple of podcasts ago, or a couple of episodes ago, I reported that my neighbors had left the dolly or bellboy cart or whatever in our, in, in the lobby, not in the lobby, right off the elevator on our floor. And they haven't done that as many times, that's fine. But they still, I didn't report this before, but they're still doing it. They leave their trash in the refuse room. So for those of you who don't live in apartment buildings or large apartment buildings, each floor generally has a refuse room where, and this is my favorite feature, I think of apartment living, is the refuse room with the garbage chute, okay? You can be up in the sky, open up a hole and dump your trash in there and it disappears forever. That is my f absolute favorite thing. I, I get so much joy out of it. I volunteer for trash duty every day, just taking that bag out, dropping it straight down. And then I kind of listen for the ka-chunk, 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 every floor it hits. I love it. Anyway, but some people just leave their garbage bag in the refuse room, in the garbage room. Other people, and I don't understand why you do that. You're that, you made it, om you're almost all the way there. Just, just, you made it to the finish line. You just didn't break the tape. Just go for it. Just open that, open that door. It's not a hard door to pull. It's not difficult. It's, it's relative. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can. But yeah, just open the door, drop the trash in there. Done deal. And get some joy out of it. It's so much fun. Oh, goodness. I'm, I'm actually getting happy just thinking about dropping the trash later today. It's going to be so exciting. But anyway, also, in addition to just leaving the trash in there, other people, or maybe the same people, I don't know, leave their cardboard boxes, their shipping containers from Amazon and whatnot, unbroken down. They leave them fully intact, and there's, there's a little cardboard section, and it's meant for people, the idea is to break down your box, collapse it so that it's flat. And I do this with 98% of my boxes. There are some times when I'm a little bit lazy, I admit this. You know, I'm in a glass house here, so I can't go throwing stones too hard, but I'll throw a few. I'll open the window, drop a few stones out. But yeah, I've, I do it almost all the time. Again, this, most of this podcast, in case you're a new listener, is me just kind of celebrating how great I am. Uh, but yeah, I don't know who these people are. Who raised, who raised you? Why? Just think it, it, it's very selfish, I think, to not break down your box or leave your recycling in there when there are recycling bins. It's right there. It's right in front of you. And you just drop your bag, boop, right in front of those things. So I just lift them up and put them in the trash. All of them. Every last one of them. Because who are you? Why? I mean, you've obviously gone through the effort. 
to, to separate out your recyclables and your trash and whatever, and you are you made it to the garbage room. Congratulations. You're almost there. This is, if you were running a marathon or just a race, this would be the part where you could see everybody cheering you on the home stretch, and you go and you make it to the finish line. People are like, hey, do you want to take one more step? You just got to break that tape, assuming you're the first one. And this is a tall order. I've used that phrase twice now. We're going to go with a big assumption instead of tall order. I think that's a little more appropriate here. You're right there. Just go for it. But you lazy SOBs are, are just... And then I have to do it. I have to put your stuff in the trash for you. That's... Who are you? I don't know. I don't know what this world has come to. When people aren't separating their recyclables into the bins and they're just leaving them in bags in the garbage room. Trash people. You are, <laughs> you, you are trash people. But also not trash people, because then, you know, the trash guy has to come by and take care of it. Um, while I've got your attention, I would like to announce that uh, I do have a live cooking show today. This is the 11th of August at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube Live. So go check out my channel. It's youtube.com slash Anthony Ladon. And I'll be doing a live cooking show today at 5 p.m. Eastern. I will be making fried chicken. And I will be telling you, you can, you can cook it in a small apartment without everything smelling like oil for two weeks. It's just one week. It only smells for a week. No, it's not that bad. But we, we're going to be doing it today. I, I, for a while, I had a daily live cooking show on YouTube called Quarantine Cooking. I think as did every other bored home chef, home cook on YouTube. And that was great. I had a lot of people tune in and we, it was a daily show every weekday. Loved it. And then I went on a one week vacation on May 8th, May 8th, and I uh, haven't returned. So <laughs> I'm back from vacation. I renamed the show Pots and Pandemics, which I think is pretty good. So Pots and Pandemics today, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So do the math, whatever time zone you're in to figure out what time I'm on. And join me. I'd love to see you there. I think it'll be fun. We're going to have a good time. It's interactive, too, because it's live on YouTube. You can put your comments there, and I can just ignore them. And then I can continue saying whatever I had planned saying, planned on saying the entire time. It'll be fun. Uh, I read a news article the other day saying people are leaving cities. I mean, we knew this. This has been in the news for a while. But, yeah, the, you know, I wasn't checking news for a long time, and now I'm occasionally doing it. But yeah, a lot of people are leaving the cities, which is on the one hand great cuz I mean I'm excited for my lease, my rent, my renewal to come up. I think my lease is when is it up? In a few weeks. And I'm looking forward to a hefty reduction in my rent. Hopefully, that's the goal. If if not, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe leave, maybe leave with them. All these people fleeing the cities. My big question is should is it true? Number 1, is the data are the data correct in saying there are lots of people leaving the cities? Is it just anecdotal and blown out of proportion? You know, is it like, oh, a handful of my neighbors are gone, therefore all my neighbors are gone? I don't know. These are big questions. Let me know your thoughts. Pote podcast at gmail.com. P-O-A-T podcast at gmail.com. I'm kind of curious. Mostly because I want to know the long-term effects, right? Is this going to be, I think... I don't know when it last happened, the 70s, 80s, or whatever, when a lot of people were leaving cities out for the suburbs, and it kind of got crappy in a lot of cities. Is that going to happen here? I don't know. I mean, it already is getting a little bit grittier. There was a fight just the other uh, last two weeks outside my, um, oh, I think I mentioned this on the last podcast, so I won't belabor that point. But the, yeah, you know, there's things, there's two homeless shelters in the neighborhood that just opened up in luxury hotels, so... Is that going to continue? Are people leaving? Should we be worried? How do we get them back? I loved Governor Cuomo's quote. I think he was on the news or something or tweeted this. I can't remember. I heard it secondhand. So this may be false. Fake news. You heard it here first. But he went on record or he, he was saying that the 1% has effectively left New York. And that's important because they contribute, I think, the vast majority of tax revenues for the state of New York and the city. So, well, I don't know about the city. I'm, I'm adding that, but we'll go with the state because I think that's what he said. And he, he said, come on back 
I'll, I'll cook for you. You can come over. I'll make you dinner. You know, it was a very kind of friendly Cuomo-esque invitation to come on back. Where, and then de Blasio got on and I think responded by saying, good riddance, we don't need you. The real New Yorkers are here. We stuck around and we'll be fine. That's, those are fighting words, if you ask me. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to say that you have to like, you know, bend over backwards to court back the 1%, but, you know, maybe just don't be a dick about it. That's, it's saying good riddance? Come on, dude. I, I realize that you're just talking to maybe your constituency, the people who voted you in, but I think even they, I don't mean to put words in their mouths, but I think even they would be like, oh God, that's kind of mean. I don't know. I don't know. That's the, my thought. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've considered leaving New York as well. My wife and I are talking, you know, where do, where would we go if we wanted to? Also, let's, let's jump back for a second. Is this affecting other cities? Also, does it matter? Because, you know, it's, it's a lot. Actually, I don't know. Maybe it does matter. Other cities are kind of more like towns to me. You know, like Seattle is kind of just a collection of a few tall buildings. And then the, everything else is Microsoft around it and Amazon. But... Does it, yeah, does it matter if people actually leave those cities? It doesn't matter if they leave New York. I don't know. Are people still, you know, is New York still something? Is it still like a cultural center? Do people care? I don't know. Because I'm in it. It's like the eye of the hurricane. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, we've, yeah, my wife and I have even talked about it as well. I don't know where we would go though, because I I like a lot of the things that I still get here in New York. I, I listened to a comedian I was uh, on a Zoom show, and I, forgive me if I've already said this on a podcast, but or on an episode. But I, she was joking about how, with everything that's happened in New York, uh, and all the people kind of leaving, all the restaurants shut down, it kind of just feels like an expensive Cincinnati. You know, it's just a bunch of tall buildings, a handful of people. That's it. And if it's really just an expensive Cincinnati, why wouldn't you just move to a cheap Cincinnati? If if, if, if it's the same thing. And that's kind of what it feels like, you know, we can't go out and about, but there are a handful of things I still love. I like my grocery delivery. I like the fact that things are right here. It still feels alive. You know, I can still look out my window and see people, see a city. It feels vibrant, if a little ill, you know, but that's, those are just my thoughts. I don't know. Should we care? Should we care that a bunch of people are leaving? Is this even, is it pointless to discuss it? I don't know. But yeah, I don't know where we would go because, I mean, we've tried suburban life and I didn't like it. I, I, don't lo- I don't love having a car. It was nice to be able to get out whenever we wanted and not have to rely on a cab or a rental car. You know, it's just that you get a little bit more freedom in that sense. But you, there's a lot, you know, you have a, you're in a car. You're just, you're sitting down to go anywhere. And I don't know, I kind of, I don't know if I love that. And then stuff spread out. I know that stuff is denser here in New York, but, and, but a lot of that stuff is closed. So I, I realize that that's kind of a moot point, but yeah, basically then are you, are you just trading one home for another, assuming that everything else around you is the same? You know what I mean? Like if instead of getting my groceries delivered, would I go, go to a grocery store? Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to drive to it and that's just. I don't know. I'm rambling now. I'm just trying to think of where I would go. I realize that millions of people do this on a daily basis and they love it. And they would probably never ever want to live in a major city, let alone New York. That's fine. I get that. I love the people who always compare rent and size of homes. You know what I mean? Like the ones who are always like, God, how much you pay for a tiny place? Woo wee. I got my whole home, my double wide for 60 grand. You know, it's again, I don't know. Why. I guess it's always, I'm always going to be making fun of the South on this. I'm sure my listeners in the South are like, dude, we hate this guy. And there are probably no listeners in the South then. Uh, just know it's not personal. It's professional. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. What was I saying? I, I lost my idea there. Rent. Oh yeah. And the, oh, the people who always complain, like how much do you pay for how little? There's a difference though. Like I just place much more value on my loca- my physical location. Like I would rather be here than there. 
I'd rather be here than almost kind of anywhere else. The other thing is if we did move, then I, I mean, I know the, the stand-up comedy scene is, you know, dead for right now. It's all moved on to Zoom, which is fine. It's a, it's a different scene, as I've mentioned before. But, you know, they're trying, and I appreciate that. But, you know, stand-up's dead here in New York. And then the other thing would be that I, I wouldn't be able to do any uh, commercial work. I'm, I'm a commercial actor. I mean, I act in commercials, I guess. That's a better way to put it. And very few, by the way. It's, this is not like this is bringing home a lot of bacon. Yeah, you know, a few here and there, mostly local stuff for banks and dealerships, but, and any role, anytime I need to play a dad. So if you're looking for a character to play a dad, I'm your guy. No kids, no, so I really have the worst experience for this. I'm, I'm not going to be drawing on anything personal to be a dad on TV. But uh, that's, that, I would have to give up the, the idea or even the, you know, the option to act in a role. Because there's not a whole lot of roles outside. I mean, there are. But there's not a lot outside of New York. It would have to be L.A. And I don't want to live in L.A. I lived in Southern California for a year. And that was about a year too long. Love it. Short-term visits. So much fun. Going down to visit the parents that I adore. You know, because you get it. You get the best of that world in a few days or a week. Perfect. And then you can get out. Yeah. I like that. What else are we talking about here? Oh, yeah, they canceled Mulan. Oh, no, they, they're releasing Mulan. That's right. This, was, uh, this is a big deal. I'm really kind of excited to see Mulan. They're charging. So this is a Disney film. This is going to be the live action Mulan. And I had only seen the cartoon Mulan this in the last six months, I think. And it was, I loved it. Eddie Murphy was fantastic. It was, it was a great, I love the music. It was, it was fun, you know, um, but they, they're doing a live action version of it and they had postponed it because obviously Disney was like, we don't want to release this movie in theaters when nobody can go to a theater. <laughs> Could you imagine like, that would be a pretty dumb move. All right, we're going to release this in theaters and they're like just waiting for the, the money to come rolling in. They're like, hey, didn't anybody tell you? Nobody's going. No, but thankfully they knew what was going on and they, they didn't release it. But then, you know, how long are you just going to sit on this movie? Yeah, how long are you going to sit on this movie and not release it, you know? So they finally decided to release it. I don't know when it's coming out. I think pretty soon. And it's going if it's not already out, I don't know. But it's going to be on Disney+. Plus, and you're going to have to pay extra for it. 30 bucks, I think. But I think it's going to be worth it. Because I don't know what the average family is you know the the average viewer who goes to see Mulan I'm assuming is a family maybe two kids or on average so you figure a $15 movie ticket even if it's 10 bucks maybe where you're living and I don't know in the south do they do they have movies I I'm kidding but yeah 10 to 15 bucks it's and three tickets four tickets that's already 40 bucks concessions on top of that you know in America that's an extra $90 um so that's what you're dealing with. And I think this would be a great deal. And then you can have a family movie night, $30. The ones who really are getting the short end of the stick here are movie theaters. And that actually, I'm really curious. This raises a question. It doesn't beg the question. If you if you ever think that you're going to use the phrase beg the question, you probably don't mean beg the question, by the way. The people who use the phrase beg the question in a sentence already know what it means and when to use it. And they're not thinking about whether or not to say, is this an ap appropriate time to say beg the question? So this raises the question, what's the future of movie theaters? I don't know. Give me your thoughts. Send me your thoughts. Poe podcast at gmail.com. P-O-A-T podcast. But I'd like to know, are movie theaters going to be around? Let, let's say that, that, you know, there's two, there's obviously a couple hypothetical directions that this is going to take, Right. There's a vaccine, A-OK, -okay. we, you know, we figure that it's like eradicating polio, except we somehow have to get it also to the anti-vaxxers, and we take care of it, it's gone, great, everybody returns back to normal. Are people going to be still loving this kind of life, like the work from home life and the moving to suburbs, well, I guess suburbs have, but are they, you know, if we've interrupted the habit or the idea of going to a movie theater, are we still going to go afterwards? Again, this is assuming that there's a vaccine or for, for whatever, however it manifests itself, 
we've taken care of COVID-19, right? It's gone. And then also assuming nothing has come up in its place. So let's, let's set that. Uh, but yeah, this, are we going to go back to the movies? I, I could kind of see that going either way. On the one hand, it is kind of nice to have, to go somewhere to do a thing. You know, you go out to a movie theater to see a movie. I, I liked going to movies for the big action-y kind of movies, you know? Any of the 30 annual Avengers movies, anything from Marvel, which I think they came out every day of the year a couple of years ago. But any, you know, those were kind of fun. The big action-y thing, anything by Michael Bay, you know, Transformers stuff, that would be cool to see in a theater because I would like to feel it in my body, feel the base, you know, of, the, of Optimus Prime just saying anything. He could say, welcome to dinner. And I'd be like, oh, okay, I got my $15 worth out of this. Just took a weird turn. But, and you know, or even like a date night with the wife. It's usually her idea. Let's go to a romantic comedy movie, something kind of funny. I did, I don't like, if it's on, if it's up for an Oscar, I don't want to see it. That was, uh, that was my only rule. Because those are, those are films. Those aren't movies. I, they're films, you have to think about it. And then you have to talk to snobby people about it you have to tell people you saw the film what you thought that's a lot of work i just want to go see thor kill the bad guys that's all i want to see because that's fun and then you know you don't have to tell people that you went and saw the latest avengers film it's great or the latest thor movie i guess i'm stuck on thor i mean i have a thing for thor it's his hammer i yeah so that's I didn't, yeah, I don't want to see, I don't want to see films too much work. It's, ah, uh, that's anything that does anything that's up for an Oscar is a hard pass for me. So, but yeah, that I kind of liked going to movies for or movie theaters for that reason. But you know, I, I'm looking at the data here. I didn't go. I, I didn't go that, that often. We didn't go maybe twice in a year, I think. And if that's the, a, a luxury I need to give up because nobody else wants to go fine. That's the, that I'm okay with that. You know, I've made my piece. I can instead watch Mulan at home. I think the TV I have here is, was a $300 TV and it's a, whatever, a 50, 40 inch LCD from Amazon. And it was 300 bucks and that would be fine. You know, you just pull it straight up to, to the couch and you feel like you're there. I, you know, that that's fine. I can do that. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to know, are movie theaters, is that real estate going away? I mean, you know, are movie theaters going away? Is something going to fill in? I don't know. These are, this is what keeps me up at night, really, is our movie theaters going to be around. But yeah, Mulan, 30 bucks on Disney Plus. Is it ever, has anybody else uh, subscribed to Disney Plus? I did. I love it. I think just for The Mandalorian. That show was amazing. I, I highly recommend it just for that. I think it's the only thing I've watched on Disney Plus, so maybe I should rethink the subscription because I'm paying, you know, the extra. Because then they have a, a deal with Hulu where you get a couple bucks off if you get them both because they're all in the same family. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if I watch anything else on Disney Plus, so maybe, maybe I do need to cancel. Maybe I'll never see Mulan. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll be Mulanless. That'll be fine. All right, we talked about my terrible neighbors. Talked about that. Oh, you, okay, so here's a follow-up on something I mentioned last week about reviewers and commenters, and specifically negative commenters, and my review of those people is two thumbs down. But anyway, a couple of people commented on the YouTube, I also released these on YouTube, as I mentioned, and that's fine, and a couple of people wrote in, they had opinions, I love it, you know, both pro and con on the reviewers. I'd like to, I, I think there's something about the anonymity that brings out the worst in people. You know, you're hiding behind an avatar and you can say, you know, whatever you want to say. And it turns out a lot of people are complete jerks when they get on to commenting. I'd like to know, would you say that to that person's face? You know, maybe every time you're about to comment something, let's say you do feel strongly about commenting and you think you should, you should leave a comment and let's assume it's negative because positive comments, great, love them. I'm sure any artist or creator appreciates that in some form or another, but the negative comments, eh, nobody gives a shit. But yeah, I'd like to know if you think about, would you say this to that person's face? 
I, I think that one of the examples, my wife and I are talking about this and she pointed out an example like of makeup artists or makeup people on YouTube and like there's thousands of comments and so many of them are like, you're ugly. And like, what kind of, I mean, even if, let's assume you're not a bot. Let's assume a lot of them are bots or whatever. And then the rest are Putin. I've never said Putin's name like that. It sounds more like Putin. But let's, let's assume they're, let's assume they're not bots and they're not Russians. And there still are a few. Who, why would you say that? I, that's why I, I don't know. I think what if we had a system where it was your real name? You know, or there was, you know, tied it back to you. You had a reputation to uphold. That's, that's, I don't know. Would you like, and also I, I, coming back to the question, would you say to somebody's face? That's, I don't know. It's really hard to be a dick to somebody right to their face, but behind your back, oh man, I will say terrible things about you. But you know, right to your face, that's hard. I mean, I guess you could argue maybe we're getting to the heart of the truth or something, but nobody cares about your truth. You're just being a dick, if you I think, if you leave a negative review, a negative comment. That's why I don't like critics or, or reviewers just in general. Like, are, are you just a failed artist? I think critics are just jealous. I think they really wish they were, they had the skills. Maybe they think they do, but I think, I think they wish they had the skills or just, just the, the, the gumption, the chutzpah, just to get in and do the thing that a creator does. That's my thought on critics. That's my critique on critics. Maybe I don't have the guts to do what they do. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> that's gonna be, that's crazy. Yeah, that's why I don't know. I don't like them. I don't, uh, I don't respect them. I think that's the, the thing. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. I realize this is me, you know, would I say this to your face? I don't know. Probably. Just because, I don't know. That's my, I don't know. That's my thought on reviewers. I'm contemplating doing a road trip just to get out of the city, not to leave it permanently, but my wife and I are talking about it. Just, it, it'd be so nice to get outside of these four walls, but I don't know. I I'm wrangling. I'm grappling. There's a lot of things I'm doing here with this thought, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to figure out there's, there's two f hangups I have about this. Number one is is it going to be fun going to other places? Now, to, to set the, the stage here, my wife and I absolutely love road trips. We've done, I don't know, probably 10 cross-country road trips all up and down the West Coast, all up and down the East Coast. It's, we've, we've put a lot of miles in cars, all rental cars. And that, those have been, so we love it. But part of the reason why we love it is the the random outback steakhouse stops or, you know, finding, sitting at a bar in Indianapolis and getting a book recommendation of 1941 from one guy who was a pilot, I think for NetJets. And then on the other side, getting, having a guy that said he'd never read books and he was all, he, he was from the South. Becca, this one's for you. He was from the South and said he read one book, didn't like it, so he didn't go back. Funny guy. But anyway, yeah, those are kind of the fun things. Like, those are just the, just being open to new experiences. That's kind of the fun of a road trip. Now, a road trip during COVID and the pandemic and everything, is that going to be fun? Because we're just going to be trekking across the country and then, you know, we might get, maybe we'll get Outback takeout. That could be kind of, actually, maybe this could be kind of fun. You know, and knowing that all right, we just got to be a little more careful with what we touch. We're not going to be indoors or doing any of that stuff. I have, I'm enough of a germaphobe in that sense where even if it's allowed in your state or other states, I'm not going to do it. That's probably why you guys have a much bigger issue with this thing than New York does right now. Not to pick a fight. I'm just saying we're doing it right after doing it wrong for so long. But yeah, that's, is it going to be fun? And I think maybe where I'm arriving at with this is, yeah, I think, I think it'll be fun. It'll just be a different kind of fun. It'll, it'll be, you know, we will have to be open to those experiences and they may not, they just won't be the same. You know, maybe we'll have to get takeout or something. And instead of eating at an in a table, like at a Panera parking lot or something, we'll just eat in the car or on the road. We actually do that a lot anyway. So it's not going to be a huge change, but yeah, no bars. That's okay. That's fine. No hotel bars to meet people. Great. 
It'll be a slightly lonelier, I guess. But we'll have each other and our pup. It'll be super fun. So yeah, maybe what I'm arriving at, I'm okay with that first one. The second hangup I have though is, am I going to be tracking Rona across the country? You know, like by just by being out and about, touching a handle, a door handle, gas handle, anything, am I going to be, you know, contributing to the problem? That's the other hangup I have. And I, this is, maybe this is, I'm not too worried about that, but I also want to make sure that that's not the, whatever it's the, I don't, it's not the spotlight effect, but it's that thing where it's like, I'm okay, you're not okay. You know, where I know what I can do to control the spread, uh, you know, or my part of it. I can, I can sanitize my hands, wear all the masks and all that stuff. Basically, I know what I'm doing to be careful, but I don't trust that you're doing the same things. It's I'm okay, you're not okay. So, which I learned from the Enlightenment Now book, one of my favorite reads in the last 10 years. And it was a recommendation off of Bill Gates' blog, Bill Gates Notes, I think is the website, billgatesnotes.com or something like that. But anyway, it's a Bill Gates read. He said it's one of his favorite books of all time. I agree with the guy. I think he's onto something. Not as dim-witted as he looks. Actually, he doesn't look dim-witted. But yeah, so that was from Enlightenment Now. I picked up that. I, I can't remember the name of it, so I'm gonna have to go look that up. Anyway. But yeah, it's, I, so yeah, number one, is it going to be fun? Yes. Number two, am I going to unwitting, uh, uh, unwillingly contribute to the spread of Rona? And I don't think so. I'm assuming, you know, I sanitize stuff the hands, you know, whenever I use a, a gas handle. Is it, what am I trying to say? Gas handle? The, you know, the, <laughs> I haven't driven a car for so long. What is it called? The gas dispenser? The gas gun? What? <laughs> this is the gas handle, right? Oh God, I, kn I know I'm going to get a bunch of emails on this. <laughs> like you dimwit, it's, it's this, whatever that thing is. And I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's what I'm going to get. A bunch of emails from people saying, you numb nuts. That, that should just be the subject line for your email to popodcast at gmail.com. Just, just say it numb nuts. And if everybody does that, then they'll all be in the same thread. And I can see all the people that think I'm a numb nuts right there. So yeah, road trip. I think, I think we'll do it. I don't know where to go though. You know, should we do the cross country thing? Should we do up the Northeast, you know, Maine and then back around? Can't go to Canada. Unfortunately, I've always wanted to do a Canadian road trip because I hear it's beautiful up there. I, I mean, I, I've been to Canada before, but really only Montreal. Uh, no, I haven't been to Montreal. Why did I lead with the ones I haven't been to? That's, that's actually scary how quickly people, me especially, can just lie on the spot. And I didn't even know I was going to say a lie, but I did. I've been all over Canada. You know I mean? Montreal, never been. Manitoba is my favorite. No. I, is that even a thing? Is Manitoba? Are there any Canadian listeners? Do you guys have the internet? Welcome to America. Do I need to speak slower? Okay. But yeah, that's where, what was I saying? Yeah. I always, I've wanted to do a Canadian road trip. My wife and I have been longing, pining, to do a Canadian road trip. We honeymooned in Whistler. That was fun. Didn't ski at all. Mostly because I was sick the whole time. That was fun. I had like a flu. This was pre-Rona. People, people, I don't know if you know this, people actually got other illnesses besides COVID-19. It, uh, it was a weird time where people got things like the flu and the cold. It, at one time, it was common to get the cold. But yeah, Canada. Canada's still closed. They, they don't want us. That's fine. I get it. And we don't want them taking all of our jobs. But yeah, Canadian road trip. So yeah, I don't know. Up the Northeast, maybe. Down Southwest, I don't know. Love, or Southeast, I don't know. Love it down there too. It's all, it's all kind of, you know, this land is our land. This land is your land. It's, it's everybody's land. It's great. Well, except the people we took it from. So yeah, road trip. Looking forward to it. I think it's going to be kind of fun. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna, yeah, like just take a week just to get out and about, you know? You just leave these four walls. Okay, I beat the road trip topic to deck. What else, what else are we going for here? Yeah, maybe we'll just call it here. We've gone for 45 minutes. This has been really nice. I don't know, see, uh, oh, you know what, here's another idea. How long is too long to wait to give somebody a Christmas gift that you should have given them a while ago. 
This is a big question for me. I, I have a Christmas gift that I meant to give someone three years ago. Well, no, two and a half years ago. Do I still give it to that person and say, hey, this was your gift from a couple of years ago? Or do I just kind of forget it? I think I ended up getting him something else. So I covered my base there. But now I've got this wrapped gift. And it looks, it's beautifully wrapped. I think I wrapped it. But I, yeah, it's a wrapped gift. And but is it going to be weird now? I guess I could just give it to him as this year's Christmas gift, right? I guess I could do that. I, <laughs> I think I just figured out my problem. I just solved another of life's mysteries. You're welcome, self. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it that you've made it all the way to the end. Do not forget to subscribe to this podcast because I hope that you'll be around next week. That, that, how was that? Was that a good call to action? All right. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this podcast. Your listenership. No, that's not a good one. All right. Thanks so much for listening. It's been a pleasure being in your ears and in your eyes. As awkward as that sounds, please know I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I know that's more of a YouTube-y thing to say. I, can you like a podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts? I don't know. I don't, I've never, I don't listen to podcasts. Maybe that's why this one stinks. I've, I've said that before. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing this every week for the foreseeable future because I have nothing going on on Tuesdays. And I figure this is a good day to drop a podcast. So uh, if you did like it, also... I'd ask you to consider supporting this podcast monetarily. You can go to anchor.fm slash Anthony Ladon to check that out or go to my website. There's a little note there and you can uh, find out how to support the podcast. Uh, it's, I kind of sound like NPR asking for a pledge here right now, but it's kind of a fun way, I think, to say, hey, thanks for making this podcast. We appreciate it. Oh, the other way, I, I started, you know what? I'm not going to do that. We're just going to, all right. Thanks so much. Take care. We'll see you again soon next week. Bye.